Thank you, Lester Hirlock. Uh, as we know, Minister, we're all here because of, of, of the, the huge impact that Brexit will have. And I, I listened to the Minister for Agriculture, Minister Creed, earlier speaking the, about the, the issues facing the agricultural sector and the agri-food industry. And while within the bill, because it's quite technical as to the things it has to amend, there is little or no mention of them because mainly they're covered under aspects of trade. Still, there is issues around tariffs that we're very concerned about. There's issues around the free movement of goods, particularly in the border region that we're very concerned about. But Really, you know, all of that stuff is, 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 is going to be dealt with, I think, with amendments that will come to this bill as we move through committee stage and into report stage, and, and I'll deal with that in a few minutes. But this evening, I just want to talk for a couple of minutes around the, the, the issue of the Good Friday Agreement, which, I, I, in fairness, you've acknowledged yourself and spoke at length about in your own contribution as to the importance of it. And I, I've shared this story many times in different venues, and uh, it's a, over 20 years ago now, I remember being in Belfast one evening, and at that time, the negotiations were going on. And Sinn Féin used to organise what we call community meetings and community halls. And I was, I'm not sure, I think it was Turf Lodge, somewhere like that. We went into a hall, probably about the size of this room, and it was full of people from the community, just ordinary people. And some of the negotiators are up at the top table talking about what was going on in the talks. I remember Jerry Kelly was there, I think, Leo Green and others. And they were talking about, at that time, the tarnish that was Dick Spring. And Dick Spring's mantra was, it's not about uniting territory, it's about uniting people and bringing people together. And they were explaining how he was always saying this. And a little old woman in the back of the room stood up and said, who's this Dick Spring guy? Who, where is he from? And they said, he's from County Kerry. Well, she said, I went out this morning without my ashes, she said. And there was a soldier with a gun sitting behind the wheelie bin. Now, she said, tomorrow morning in Kerry, if he went out to his back garden and there was a soldier in it, territory would be important to him. And everyone laughed and joked. But I got a lesson that evening that I hadn't got before. Because people in those communities, that thing that we used to call the British occupation, was an occupation of their very lives. And when we asked them, and when, when people like Gerry Adams and Martin McGuinness and other Republican leaders went into Republican communities and convinced people to transform the situation of conflict into a different situation, it was, it was a whole change in their lives. Because their very existence had been resistance up to that. And you know, I, I do often think that certainly when you come into this place, that there isn't enough acknowledgement of the huge work that was done at that time by Republican leaders to change that situation. No, no and I think that needs to be something that has to be said and said loudly and clearly. Because the next morning when I woke up in a little room in Belfast, I listened for a few minutes and all I could hear was a helicopter in the sky. Because the British government and the British military presence at that time, the helicopter, while for some people they thought it was about, you know, looking at people like, like insects under a microscope, what it actually was, it was about the noise. It was about telling the communities that lived in places like Ardoyne or Turf Lodge or, or parts of Tyrone or, or Armagh or wherever, that we were here and we were in charge. And I knew then that one of the big things that we had to do in the peace process was to demilitarise the situation. And that was achieved. And that was achieved because people took risks. They took risks for the things they wanted to do and the things they wanted to achieve. And the Good Friday Agreement is central to that. Now, the, the, the Republican leaders of then and now were just as committed to an Irish Republic as, my, as, as Eamon de Valera was in 1916 when he walked out and Michael Collins along with them. And sometimes when you come in here, Minister, you know, you think that it's all about the different sides we're on. But it's not. It's about the vision that we have for a different Ireland. And about the future Ireland. And the future Ireland for me, and for the vast majority of the Irish people, is about a united Ireland of united people. About moving forward into a new place. About unity and inclusion. And if we're going to achieve that unity and going to achieve that inclusion, we have to work together. And we have to stop bickering about nonsense. And I hear too much of that in this chamber. And for to make that happen, we have to acknowledge that the vast majority of people want a better future. And you know, at different times over the many years, I, I've spoken to people from, who come from a traditionally unionist position and who see themselves as being British. But they want the same thing as the rest of us want. And if we can create a republic, a new Ireland, where their space in it is guaranteed, they will be a unique and an absolute crucial part of it. So when we say that we want a border pole, that we believe that, we, that one of the solutions to this, that, that Brexit has exposed the folly of a border in the first place, 
and that one of the things to do is to remove that border in order to move ourselves forward. We're not doing that out of a sense of revenge for the past. We're doing that out of a sense of having a new future for all of our people. So, Minister, I, I, I think this entire debate, while it's about Brexit and about all those technical issues, it's also about having a bit of common sense and working together. And I hope that we can continue to do that. Gramiúl Mahigaf.